So welcome children to next session of geography, the physiography and drainage of Brazil. But before I go into that, in the previous lesson, I had given you a question and asked you, why do some islands in the Sundarbans Delta keep vanishing? The answer to it, I know many of you would have found out anyway, here it is, it is due to global warming. Many islands like Newmore Islands, Goramara Islands, etc. are on the verge of submersion due to global warming, which results in melting of the glaciers and increase in level of sea water. Next, here we are going to go into physiographic divisions of Brazil, just as we had done in the previous lesson under India. Here too, we are going to do physiographic divisions in detail. Do you know how Brazil came to be known as Brazil? Here is the answer. The name Brazil comes from a tree named Brazilwood. Let's go through the video and find out more about Brazil. Physiographic divisions of Brazil can be broadly classified under the following heads. The highlands, here we are going to study about the Brazilian highlands and Guana highlands. The coastal regions along the North Atlantic and South Atlantic coasts. The Great Escarpment situated along the southeast part of Brazilian highlands. The plains of the Amazon, Parana, Paraguay rivers and the island groups. The map of Brazil clearly shows that the mountains are not very high and long extending. White plains of Brazil are found in the northern Amazon basin and in southwest along the upper parts of Paraguay basin. The coastal plains are confined to their expanse. Let's come to the highlands. Under highlands, we have the Brazilian highlands which is an extensive plateau situated along the southern part of Brazil. It is also known as the Brazilian Shield or the Brazilian Plateau. The Brazilian Highlands together with the Guana Highlands together form the core or the Brazilian of the South American continent. Guana Highlands is in Venezuela and it extends even up to French Guana. The highest peak in Brazil is Pico de Neblina. It is also known as Miss Peak because this region is permanently covered with dense clouds. It is situated about 687 meters away from Venezuelan border. Its height is 3,014 meters. The altitude of Brazilian highlands is 1,000 meters towards the southeast, but it goes on decreasing as we move towards the north and the east, where its altitude ranges between 1,000 to 500 meters. Many rivers of the Amazon as well as its tributaries make rapids and waterfalls as it falls down from the Brazilian highlands. Rivers originating from the terminal part of the Brazilian highlands open into the North Atlantic Ocean. Southern Brazil is occupied by an extensive plateau called Brazilian Highlands, Brazilian Shield or Brazilian Plateau. The core American continent combines the Brazilian and Guiana Highlands. In Brazil, the lower part of Guiana Highlands is found. It covers the states of Roraima, Para and Amapa in the north. Pico de Neblina, the highest peak of Brazil, is 3,014 meters high. It lies on the border between Brazil and Venezuela. 
the altitude of Brazilian highlands to the east and south region is more than 1000 meters. However, the altitude in the other regions is between 500 to 1000 meters. A number of rivers originate in highlands and head in the north. They meet the Atlantic Ocean. The major rivers are Uruguay, Paraguay and Parana originate from the southern slopes of the highlands and enter Argentina. The slope of highlands towards east is steep. The slope appears in the form of an escarpment demarcating the highlands. The next physical feature that I'm going to talk about is the Great Escarpment. The Great Escarpment is situated along the southeast part of Brazil. Though its height is only about 790 meters stretching from Sao Paulo to Porto Alegre, it influences the climate of Brazil greatly. The southeast trade winds which move over from the south Atlantic Ocean give orographic rainfall to regions along the south and east of Brazil. Further up, as it moves towards the north and east, it becomes almost dry. This is the rain shadow region. This region is also known as the drought quadrilateral. The Great Escarpment is a separate physiographic region because of the nature of its slope and the effect it has on the climate. It covers a very small area. The altitude of the escarpment is 790 meters. However, in some regions, the height decreases gradually. The escarpment, particularly from Sao Paulo to Porto Alegre, is very steep. The escarpment blocks the southeast trade winds. This gives rise to the rain shadow area in the northeastern part of the highlands. The region to the north of this area is known as drought quadrilateral. Now, shall we go over to the coast now? As in India, where the coastline is 7,500 kilometers, Brazil's coastline is also extensive about 7,400 kilometers. Along from the north to the east, it stretches from Amapa province to Rio de Grande Norte along the east. The northern part of the coastline is a low-lying region as it contains the mouth of many rivers like the Amazon, Tocantins, etc. Here we have the coastal island of Marajo, which is situated between Amazon and Tocantins rivers. Marajo is the largest river island in the world. Many small rivers also open into the North Atlantic Ocean, like Paraniba, etc. Along the eastern coast, we have the Sao Francisco River was the only river which flows entirely through Brazil. It traverses the entire length of Brazil for 1000 kilometers and opens into the South Atlantic Ocean. Brazil is also famous for its beaches as we have the Rio de Janeiro, the milky white sand dunes, reefs, atolls, etc. Brazil coastline is about 7,400 kilometers and can be divided into two, northern and eastern coast. The northern coast is called as North Atlantic coast. It begins from Amapa province in the north to Rio de Grande de Norte in the east. From Rio de Grande de North, the eastern coast extends towards the south. The northern region is a low-lying region and mouths of many rivers including the Amazon meet it. Apart from the important river San Francisco, which meets the Atlantic Ocean, several small rivers flow from the eastern coast. There are many large beaches and sand dune complexes on the Brazilian coast. The Brazilian coast is characterized by coral reefs and atoll islands in some area. No. 
let us come to the plains under the plains we are going to discuss the plains formed by the rivers the amazon parana paraguay etc we are going to take the amazon river basin first the Amazon River Basin stretches between the Brazilian Highlands and the Guana Highlands. It is the largest plain here in Brazil, stretching for 1,300 kilometers. Amazon River Basin is broad along the western side and narrows towards the east. In fact, this is a region covered by tropical rainforests. As this region is the equatorial region, we know this region receives plenty of rainfall, so I say more than 3000 mm and hence we have dense growth of tropical trees here. This region is highly inaccessible due to dense trees as well as due to frequent flooding. The Amazon River Basin or, the Amazon, or rather the Amazon rainforests are known as the lungs of the world because of large amounts of oxygen which is given out by the trees here. Next is the Parana and the Paraguay River Basins. Towards the southwest of the Brazilian highlands is the source of the Parana and the Paraguay River. The Paraguay River slopes towards the south and the Parana River towards the southwest. Again, towards the southwest of the Brazilian highlands is the world's largest tropical wetland in the world, which is known as the Pantanal. Pantanal is a region of swamps and marshes. Here many rivers open into this and hence has created the largest swamp in the world. It is found even extending towards Argentina. The plains in Brazil are in two areas, the Amazon Basin in the north and Paraguay Parana source region in the southwest. Amazon plains fall in between the two highlands, form the largest plain land of Brazil. The Amazon Basin is quite wide in the west measuring about 1,300 km and narrows towards the east. The frequent flooding and dense thickets of the Amazon Plain has made it unusable. The other plains in Brazil fall on the southwestern part of the highlands forming the source region of Paraguay and Parana rivers. Now next we are going to discuss about is the Pantanal region. The Pantanal region, as I said, is the world's largest tropical wetland, covering 42 million acres of land and is known for its pristine beauty. It covers the three South American countries of Bolivia, Paraguay, and Brazil, and it supports millions of people living here. Most of the people are into cattle ranching or rubber tapping. If you take its expanse is almost equal to 29 US states and 9 European countries. There's a region which is known for its wildlife. We have almost about 10 million crocodiles here, jaguars and macaws. And most interestingly, 95% of Pantanal is under private ownership. Only 5% is owned by the government. Pantanal, one of the largest wetlands in the world, lies towards the southwest part of the highland areas. Pantanal is characterized by swamps and marshes in northwestern Mato Grosso, though so in Brazil, extending into Argentina. We are going to discuss about the islands. Now, what is an island? An island, as I said, is a landmass surrounded on all sides by water. We have two types of island. 
One is a coastal island, also known as continental island, and the other is a marine island, which is situated away from the coastline. In Brazil, we have many coastal islands which are formed by deposit of sediments, as we have Marajo, Santa Catarina, etc. Marajo is one of the largest river islands in the world and is famous for its wildlife like water buffaloes, crocodiles, piranhas, etc. We have many marine islands here in Brazil. Most of them are situated away from the coastline and they are usually rocky or peaks of submerged mountain chains or they are atolls or coral islands. Example we have of atoll is Rocas atoll. Apart from this, there are also archipelagos like Sao Pedro and Fernando de Norana. The islands from Brazil can be classified into coastal islands and marine islands. Marine islands are submerged mountains which are more than 300 kilometers away from the mainland in the Atlantic Ocean. The coral islands are near the coast of the South Atlantic Ocean. They are called as atolls. The next topic which I am going to discuss here is drainage. Under drainage of Brazil, we are going to study about the source of the river Amazon, the Parana and the, the Paraguay rivers. The Amazon River which is the largest river in Brazil collects its headwaters from the eastern slope of the Andes mountains and as you all know the Andes is the longest chain of mountains which extends all along the western coastline of South America. The Amazon River also receives water from various tributaries and it is said that it receives such a lot of water, say about 2 lakh meter cube per second, that the sediments which are collected by the river doesn't get deposited, but it just gets washed away. Hence, we find, just as we have found in many of the Indian rivers where we talked about formation of delta, here in the case of Amazon, delta doesn't get formed here. Instead, we have an estuary or even an island formed at the mouth of the river. Next is, we come to the Parana and the Paraguay River. The Parana and the Paraguay Rivers are situated along the southwest part of Brazil and it is the catchment area or the River Plata in Argentina. The Parana, Paraguay and the River Uruguay collect their headwater from the southern part of the Brazilian highlands. On the eastern side, we have the São Francisco River and it flows through the entire length of Brazil for 1000 meter kilometers, turns towards the east and opens into the Atlantic Ocean. Small coastal rivers like Paraniba, Itapecru, etc. flow towards the North Atlantic Ocean and Puraguaca opens into the eastern side of the Atlantic Ocean from Salvador. Brazil has the most extensive river system in the world that winds its way through the magnificent terrain. Brazil has three major river basins the Amazon Basin, Paraguay-Parana system in the southwest and the Sao Francisco in the eastern part of Highland and other rivers at the coasts. Amazon, the largest drainage system in the world, has its source in the eastern slopes of Andes Mountains in Peru. It gets a huge discharge of water that is about 2 lakh meter cube per second. Consequently, the load received from the catchment area is washed off. Hence, 
the Amazon lacks any dense network of distributaries, a distinguishing feature of river mouth areas. Instead, a series of islands are formed beyond the coastline into the Atlantic Ocean. The width at the mouth of the Amazon River is 150 kilometers and a major part of the river is suitable for navigation. Paraguay and Parana rivers, the second largest river after Amazon, is also called the La Plata River Basin. It is in the southwestern part of Brazil and forms the catchment of River Plata in Argentina. Paraguay and Parana rivers, together with Uruguay River in the extreme south of the highlands, have their source in the southern portion of the highlands. São Francisco is the third important river in Brazil. The entire basin of this river lies within Brazil. It is also called River of National Integration as it unites diverse regions of Brazil. It occupies the eastern portion of the highlands. The river originates in the Canastra mountain range. It flows northward for about 1000 kilometers and then turns eastward to enter the coastal strip along the Atlantic Ocean. The river is navigable for about 250 kilometers in its downstream reaches. Brazil has several short coastal rivers. The coastal areas are the most densely populated regions. River Paranaiba is an important source for River Parana. Itapecuru River also lies in northern Brazil. Both the rivers flow into the North Atlantic Ocean. The rivers that enter the South Atlantic Ocean have their headwater in the escarpment. River Puruguaco enters the Atlantic Ocean near Salvador town. So children, here I've finished discussing about the physical features of Brazil. Now I'm going to take a comparative study of both the rivers that we have studied the largest river in India, that is the Ganga River, and the largest river of Brazil, that is the Amazon. We are going to discuss these two rivers under the following heads. That is the total catchment area, total length of the river, and water discharge. Okay, so the total catchment area of the Ganga River is 10,16,124 square kilometers but of the Amazon, it is 70,50,000 square kilometers. Now, what about the length of Ganga? The total length of the Ganga River is 2,525 kilometers and the Amazon River's length is 6,400 kilometers. What about the water discharge? Look at the Ganga River. Now, the water discharge of the Ganga River is 16,648 cubic meter per second, but of the Amazon, look at the figure, such a huge figure here, it's 2,9,000 cubic meter per second. And finally, children, we have some questions here which I want you to write down as an assignment. But before you go into these questions here, please go through both the lessons for geographic division of India as well as Brazil and then attempt these questions which I have given here. Let's summarize what we have learned so far. Bear in mind, the geography is best studied with the help of maps. So as you go through these lessons, keep the maps of both the countries in front of you and then study. Till then children, best of luck. Goodbye.